for the audio or you can even watch back Giving players all the props or put them on blast We don't give no hot takes, only talk facts We're giving all our devotion Riding high on this wave of emotion Going all out, yeah, cause this is the time No, way, no stopping us till we reach the finish line Can hold it down. Shout out to my man Sammy, got it off the ground. And to all the listeners tuned in right now. Got debates, analysis, and speculation. This is sports talk for the new generation. You know where to find us, got a reputation. Sick podcast, your number one sports destination. Giving all our devotion, riding high on this wave of emotion. Going all out, yeah, cause this is our time. No, we no stopping us till we reach the finish line. Tuning for the audio, or you can even watch back. Giving players all the props, or put them on blast. We don't give no hot takes, only talk back. S I C K. S I C K. S I C K. S I C K. For the audio, or you can even watch back. Giving players all the props, or put them on blast. We don't give no hot takes, only talk facts. We're giving all our devotion, riding high on this wave of emotion. Going all out, yeah, cause this is our time. No, we no stopping us till we reach the finish line. All in, we came in a Can hold it down. Shout out to my man Sammy, got it off the ground. And to all the listeners tuned in right now. Got debates, analysis, and speculation. This is sports talk for the new generation. You know where to find us, got a reputation. Sick podcast, your number one sports destination. Giving all our devotion, riding high on this wave of emotion. Going all out, yeah, cause this is the time. No, we no stopping us till we reach the finish line. All in, we came in to win. We're gonna give everything. S I C K on the run. S I C K sick, sick. On fire, we're ready to fight. We'll bring the house down tonight. S I C K on the run. S I C K sick, sick. S I C K, it's a sick. Tuning for the audio, or you can even watch back. Giving players all the props, or put them on blast. We don't give no hot takes, only talk back. S I C K. S I C K. S I C K. Turn up your volume. Because you're about to listen to The Sick Podcast. With Tony Maradero. 55 seconds left in the penalty, a minute and 27 seconds left in regulation time. Boston 4, Montreal 3. Lafleur 
coming out rather gingerly on the right side. He gives it into Lemaire back to the smush. The sickest Montreal Canadiens podcast. <laughs> You're in the bomb. Sports entertainment like no other. Rejoint, on lui fait perdre la rondelle, une passe devant. Et c'est bon, c'est bon, c'est bon, et ce sera la victoire des Canadiens. You found the dogs! John, you found the dogs! He found the dogs! And all together they worked the young team to the top. And now a 24th Stanley Cup banner will hang from the rafters of the famous forum in Montreal. The Canadians win the Stanley Cup! Brought to you by Energy Transportation Group, driven to be different. 8.6 beer, intense by nature, and Lacage. If the last time you went to Lacage was when the Habs won the cup, it's time you went back to Lacage. It's going to be sick. Marinero on this Thursday, January the 26th. It is one minute past 10 o'clock, and the Montreal Canadiens lose to the Detroit Red Wings by a score of 4-3. to three in overtime and you know what i've been saying this since the beginning of the year that you give me an exciting hockey game and i'm not going to complain and everyone knows that you know i'd rather the montreal canadians lose more games than not because you know the lower they finish in the standings the better the chance they have at getting the number one pick in the lottery and i want Connor bedard badly and some want him more than others and i want him very very badly to the point where you know, uh, I was hoping that they were going to lose that game with a couple of seconds left in regulation instead of the game going to overtime because by going to overtime, the Montreal Canadiens pick up an extra point. Anyway, by now, you're probably sick of me talking about the same thing all the time that I want to tank. Uh, it was an exciting game tonight at the Bell Center. Had so many great storylines, none more so than the fourth line, in particular, Raphael RV Pinard with the best game of his young NHL career. Absolutely fantastic for him. The Sick Podcast is brought to you in part by La Cage. If the last time you went to La Cage was when the Habs won the Cup, well, it's time you go back to La Cage. The menu will surprise you. Also brought to you by 8.6 beer right here. The beer for those. See that? You see it? Uh, who uh, follow their instinct and live their passions in order to make their mark. And also brought to you in part by Energy Transportation Group. My buddy, Sean Gerard, becoming one of my very best friends in the whole world. And Mike, Chiquin, uh, Mike Cinquino, if you're in transportation sales, customer service operations, HR, or admin, well, the good news is Energy Transportation Group is hiring for all positions. Without further ado, we're going to have ourselves a roundtable tonight. Joining me, let's bring him up. Let's go. Jared Book of Habs Eyes on the Prize. And look at this piece of work. Grant McCagg <laughs> of Recruits and Recruits.ca wearing the Montreal Canadiens uh, hoodie. Look at that. Yeah. Wow. It's actually got pretty nice. It's actually pretty nice, I have to tell you. Yeah, I got that for my birthday last week. Oh, happy belated. I didn't know it was Thanks. your birthday last week. Oh, okay. Same, uh, same day as Kirby Doc and uh, Madame Bellevo, as uh, as I discovered when Stu Cowan, he's great at the birthdays there. Yeah. He now, was that, the other uh, day. <laughs> was, that, was that on the weekend? Yeah. Yeah, Saturday. Okay. Very, very yeah, good. Beat the, awesome. lease, beat the lease for me on my birthday, so that was that was sweet. I was there in attendance, and I watched it happen, as a matter <laughs> of fact. Jared, how you doing, bud? I'm good. How are you? Very, very good. Uh, hey, what do I, what do I, uh, what do I see there in the background? What do I see there? Give me the. Uh, can you give me? Uh, can you move the oh, camera around? A, can you give me a little bit of the tour of the room or what? Yeah, well, there's there's some <laughs> pucks over here. There's a uh, Danny Azubris uh, locker room plate. I uh, got some wow. baseballs and and things over there. And then behind me over here, uh, sorry, I'm not sure which way the uh, camera's going. I uh, got some more pucks uh, and uh, yeah, just a bunch of different stuff uh, going on over there. Danny. Ubris, where'd you get that? I, I honestly, I got it at the uh, the Bell Center. Uh, I was in uh, probably in high school at the time. Okay. Uh, they, they they had a basket of discarded uh, locker room plates, and um, I saw Zubris and I picked it up. Okay, pretty cool. I thought you actually. It's it's, it's, it's not a not a great story, but it's uh, no no. I I thought it, the story actually was you went into the locker room and you stole it. You know. Well. If, if I did that, I wouldn't be going back into locker room. <laughs> Zubris played uh, junior hockey up in Pembroke uh, 
where I played uh, my ho- some of my minor hockey growing up. So there was always oh, yeah. that connection there. I, I kind of always rooted for Danius there. Never really fulfilled his full potential, perhaps, but, uh, you know, he was a pretty good NHLer. No, a lot of people thought he was going to become a power forward in the National Hockey League. And he was, like you said, a good NHLer. He struggled with consistency, though, and, and he was never able to fulfill that power yeah. forward game. Eh? Yeah, that's right. Hey, let's talk about uh, let's talk about another uh, Montreal Canadian, uh, not a former one, but a present one. What a great story this is! In just five NHL games, Raphael Harvey Pinard has three goals, and uh, I'm going to look it up here on my phone. I think it was Stu Cowan. Um, no, it was my buddy. It was my buddy Jeremy Filosa. As a matter of fact, I think. Let me see. I have it here. My buddy Jeremy Filosa says, "Listen to this." Dadanov, 39 games, four goals. Slavkovsky, 39 games, four goals. Gallagher, 25 games, four goals. Armia, 32 games, three goals. Evans, 43 games, two goals. RV Pinard, five games, three goals. Not bad. I heard a I heard a stat on uh, I think he's played nine total NHL games and he has four goals, and the last had to do that was Gallagher in their first nine games as a Montreal Canadian. I thought that was a pretty uh, pretty cool stat. So you gotta you know that's great for uh, Harvey Pernard. I mean, no one you know no one works harder. A great kid, just all about effort. And I mean, he's a consummate, and I've thought it for a couple of years. He's a consummate fourth line NHLer who's going to bring the energy every shift. Him and Pizzetta, and you know, I was looking at that and saying, "Geez, Evans is going to have going to have problems getting back uh, his spot in the fourth, you know, in the in center in that fourth line if this keeps up." Because Bill Bill Zill's played fine too, you know. So it's uh, you know, Evans might be one, another one of those uh, chips that's uh, dangled at the uh, trade deadline. I think. Yeah, uh, Jared, we could add uh, Jonathan Drouin's name to the list to win 28 games this year, zero goals. And once again, and Harvey Pinard, by the way, almost had the hat trick. The Canadians go on the power oh. play with uh, less than, uh, what was it, a minute to go or whatever. It was just over a minute to go in period number three. And I'm calling for Harvey Pinard on the power play. They don't put him, but they put him in the overtime. And they're yeah. looking for him, as a matter of fact. And on one occasion, he took a one-timer that Vili Husso just slid across and made a great save. But probably about five seconds before that one, Jared, he had he, he received a pass. I think it was from Doc. I'm not sure. But he receives a pass, and he's within like two feet of the goalie, right? And I wish he would have been more selfish on the play, and he would have pretended to pass but just turned around and shot because I think the five hole was there. I'm not saying he was going to score, but he had such a hot hand that you never know. But, Jared, he almost had three tonight. Yeah, I, I think that, you know, that the last, that, that chance you talked about when he passed up the shot, that's where his other two goals came from, was, was really up and close. And, and you know, I, I don't want to keep comparing him to Brendan Gallagher because it's been happening since he, since he joined the Laval Rocket, but it's hard not to see the similarities. And I don't think he has the, you know, the skill or the goal scoring ability of, of a Brendan Gallagher, but you just see him and every night he has the opportunity to, to get some goals and he has the skill that makes it work uh, every now and then you saw a shorthanded goal uh, tonight, you know, you can put him on a second power play, especially the state of the Canadians right now. He won't look out of place either. And, and I think that it's, you know, we, we talked about, you know, I remember beginning of the season, people were like, Oh, there's no prospects in Laval. You look at the team now, Justin Barron is, is playing NHL minutes. Uh, Jesse Ullinen is playing NHL minutes. Rafael Harvey Pinar is playing NHL minutes. Uh, Alex Belzil, you know, he's not really a prospect, but he, he's there as well. Rem Pitlick had some time in Laval as well. He's playing with Nick Suzuki. So I think that, you know, there's no top prospects necessarily in Laval, but I think this is showing what, what Jean-Francois Hull is doing and, and the ability of these guys to come up and, you know, be better than some of the veterans who have been in the NHL all year. Jared, um, if I can, I think you're right, but at the same time, and it's not a it's not a slight at Jeff Hool at all because he received praise from Marty St. Louis about a week ago, and rightfully so. But, um, you know, it's, it's easier, I think, to help develop and help 
guys that come up and probably play a fourth line role than it would be to develop guys and they come up and yeah. they end up playing on a first line or a second line. Right, Grant? Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Go ahead, Jared. No, I mean, yeah, I mean, you know, obviously they don't have those kind of guys in Laval right now. <laughs> that just you get what you have, um, and obviously that's going to change maybe in the next couple of years. You know, you have Joshua Wa um, potentially, you know, whether he goes in the NHL or NHL. So it's going to be interesting to see how Laval develops when these prospects get up there. Grand Joshua Wa playing on a line with Denny Gauthier's son. Oh and, yeah, uh, and they're they're saying that uh, that yeah. young young Gauthier there is probably the first player to be draft that will be drafted this year. Out of the queue, is that right? Uh, I think so, yeah. I've got him ranked uh, 17th overall. I noticed that Bob McKenzie had him, I think, 16 on his list. Okay. Uh, so, like, somewhere, expect him to go somewhere, you know, 15 to 20 in the draft. He's uh, he's a kind of like a Harvey Pernard type uh, as far as the work ethic goes. Just, uh, you know, he, he goes 100% at all, at all times, and uh, I love his... Uh, I love his work ethic, but he's got, you know, middle line upside, second, third line, uh, and he can play center too. So he's pretty versatile. And uh, he, I think, you know, what was impressive with him too was that he, he proved when uh, Ra was away at the World Juniors that he could produce without him because that was, you know, some of the people are saying that that's the only way he was getting his points was because he was playing with Josh. But yeah. He actually put up even better numbers than he had been playing with uh, Josh the last month together. So he's showing that, uh, and and I talked to his coach, uh, you know, who was part of the World Junior Team, Stefan Julian, and he he was saying, yeah, that he proved that that he can he can score without without Josh for sure. So who knows, Grant? He might end up being the Canadians' pick with the Florida's pick in the draft. Oh. They already have one duo, a Slovak duo of Slavkovsky and Mishar going forward, and they might end up having. Roy and Gauthier going forward. No, that's right. No, uh, he's right in that ballpark. So it wouldn't surprise me if uh, he's heavily under consideration with the Florida pick. Hey, Grant, I want to add something on Harvey Pinard. I mean, there's so many things I love about the kid, but, you know, obviously his work ethic, obviously his energy, obviously it's passion. It took close to 50 games for the Montreal Canadiens, but they all, they finally seem to have an identity on their fourth line. Whether you think it's strong or not, there's an identity of a hardworking line that we'll get pucks in deep, we'll go in, we'll forecheck aggressively, we'll win battles, we'll play with energy. And that is the line, of course, of Raphael RV Pinard, uh, Alex Belzil, and and Michael Pozzetta. But what I love about him is here's a young man who came in and realized there's an opportunity. There's an opportunity for me to show what I can do while other players are injured. Let me try and seize this opportunity. And he's seizing it. I mean... Tonight Absolutely. could be the night, and I'm not saying he's not going to go back down, but tonight could be the night that Raphael RV Pinard became an NHLer for the most part, yeah. like with more regularity, right? If not full time. I tweeted out about, like I said, that, you know, that second goal, it was a sweet one there, you know, that backhand uh, up top. I said that was, uh, that was Harvey Pinard saying to Marty, you know, I'm not going back to Laval. You know, yeah. with that, uh, he, yeah, I think what's the, the concern always was that he had to get fast enough to play in the NHL. Uh, you know, that was the knock his skating and, uh, it's improved. Like, you know, it's, it's neat when you're listening to Dave Poulin on the, on the pod, on the broadcast and stuff saying, oh, you know, raving about his speed, which is always the knock, you know, on Harvey yeah. Pinard, but he's just not, he's not fast, but. It, it, you know, a lot of it's effort. He just he tries so hard that, you know, he may not be the fastest guy out there, but he's got the, the fastest heart, you know. If you're watching on YouTube Live or Facebook Live or Twitter Live, you can share the video with your friends. You can share the link. You can like it. Uh, that'll make us pretty happy. Thank you very much if you do that. If you listen to more on Google, Apple, or Spotify, you can leave us a five-star review. We would really appreciate that. Um you know, in the last month, we had over 100,000 downloads on Apple Podcasts. That's pretty cool. We're very, very proud of that. Very, very proud of that. All right, so thank you so much, all of you, for all your support. Let's get back to the game. Jared, what do you think of um, Jake Allen's first start in quite some time coming back from injury? Yeah, it was a little bit of a, a shaky start. Um, they, Detroit got the early goal, but, you know, by the end of the game, he was he was solid. He was Jake Allen. I thought he should have um, had that one, by the way. Rasmussen shot. 
Yeah, yeah. I think that you know, it's just, you know, the first game back for goalies, and, and he didn't even you know have much practice time before. Is it's always hard to simulate traffic and bodies and, and things like that. You ask any goalie, you know, what's the difference between practice and the game, and they're gonna say it's it's the traffic and and you know he. I think it's normal. I think it's to be expected when you haven't played a game and as long as he has. And but you know, he by the end of the game, you know, they Jordan got over forty shots, and and I think that he was he was what he needed to do. He gave the, ch- the team a chance to win, um, and, and I think that's what you you want to see from from Allen and uh, going forward. And you know, the trade deadline's coming up. There, there's a lot of different possibilities with this team and and people that might interest other teams. Um, and, and the goaltenders on the Canadians um, have to be in that conversation, especially Allen, because of the the play of Sam Montalbo. Grant, you like? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, he, uh, I mean, I, I I still think that they, you know, they look at him as the number one. But the, the way Montembeau's played in the last month, he, you know, for the first time in his career, and that goes back to junior, I, you know. He he looks like he might uh, be able to be a starter in the NHL, and and I think Jake Allen is. I mean, he's maybe not a top flight one, but he is. So, you know, uh, th- they're both going to uh, be valuable trading chips if if a team's looking for uh, insurance, especially if a team. Uh, I don't know if there's any injured goalies right now, but certainly if uh, you know if there's another if there's an injury or two to a contender over the next month. Uh, Montreal is going to be one of the first teams in line, I think, to get calls because they're obviously, you know, uh, they're, they're going to be sellers, right? So team teams will look at uh, those two guys and see if maybe they can pry one of them out of Montreal. Yeah, well, Grant, I mean, let, let's be honest here. I mean, there's no reason for the Canadians to trade Montembeau, not to say that he's the next coming of Dominic Kasich, but he's still at a relatively young age. He's very, very inexpensive. He's a kid from here who just keeps on getting better. Like a year and a half ago, he didn't look like he was an NHL goalie. And now we're wondering, you know what, uh, if he's a 1B or a 2A. And he's really, really progressed probably more so than most other players on this team during that span. So if they do trade someone, it's Allen. But they didn't have plans on trading Allen in the offseason when they gave him a two-year extension. So now I think you just said it. If a team has a goalie that goes down with an injury, they're going to call the Montreal Canadiens. And if they want Jake Allen, Grant, what can the Canadians get in return for him? Well, I disagree with that, Tony. I think that uh, that um, Jake Allen's the proven goalie, right? Yeah. The, I think Montreal, you know, at the end of the day, would still rather keep Jake Allen than Montembeau. And then for all the reasons that you said why they would keep him, you know, the contract, this and that, well, that makes him... That also makes him, a, a, you know, more if a team comes up looking to ask, to ask him for a second round draft pick for a guy that they picked up off on waivers, who who a uh, year from now could be an average goalie again, you you, you know, I, I look at that more so than I would at trading Jake Allen, unless the unless the deal is is uh, you know first round draft pick, you know plus, and then you know well then you trade Jake Allen, but. I still think that they uh, they consider him to be their their goalie. You know, I think still at this you know point. you know. I think you're right. I think they do consider Allen to be more a number one than Montembeau because Montembeau, the sample size, even though it's getting bigger, still isn't very big. Yeah, but I'm surprised by your answer, Grant. I'm not going to lie to you because I think if they trade one of the two goalies, I cannot see them trading Montembeau over Jake Allen, even though. I agree with your assessment that they probably still have them higher up on the totem pole, but I, I think they would keep Montembeau and they trade Jake Allen. Um, they want to be good next year, Tony. If they think Jake Allen's the better goalie, why would you trade him? He still they still need a goalie. Yeah, they're well, going to the, need a goalie next year. That's a great point. But the big question is: take a look at the gap narrowing now. In one year from now, when Allen gets a year older compared to Montembeau getting a year older, I mean. Can Montembeau well, not what, be what's ahead? Alan, 30 years old? Uh, I think he's 31. I mean, the prime, prime for goalies is till you're 35, Tony. I don't think I don't think he's, you know, he's got three or four prime years left. A, a, like a goalie stays in his prime till he's 35 or, or, or older usually. He hits, so. he hits 33 I, I, on, he hits 33 on okay. August 7th. Okay. 
Well, he's still got, you know, he's still got two, three prime years, you know. Look at Craig Anderson. He's, you know, he's in his 40s now and he's still like he's Buffalo's goalie, you know, or sorry, not Buffalo, but like he's, you know, I'm not worried about him. Uh, I, I don't see Montembeau being, you know, a genuine starter for the Habs over the next five years, but I could see Allen being their guy for the next three years till, you know, I think uh, honestly, I think they're going to probably draft a goalie in the first round this year. I wouldn't. That wouldn't surprise me at all. In the first round, they really. Who do you have? There's two goalies, uh, Bjarnason and Ravel, who are both go both very well could go in the first round, and perhaps Ravel might even go top twenty. And uh, if 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 Montreal identifies him as a you know a genuine starter, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, with the Florida pick that that. That that's who they target. Wow, they've got so many prospects, and they've got centers, they've got wingers, they've got defensemen. the The biggest need right now, I think, for them, is uh, is the the next Carey Price or whatever. And I mean, last time they picked the goalie in the first round, it was Price, and it worked out okay. So if you know, if I I believe that. Uh, uh, if you're going to pick a goal in the top 20, it's usually a, a team that has more than one draft pick in the, in the first round and Montreal does. I just think that it's a perfect uh, storm this year for them to, yeah. uh, to be picking a goal in the first round. Yeah. You were right about uh, Anderson, by the way, when you talked about him with Buffalo, they've used yeah. three goalies this year. They've used him. They've used uh Lukonen, and they've used uh, Comrie. Uh, right, but, but he's the one who has the best goals against average, yeah. and he's the one who's got the best save percentage. Uh, yeah, yeah. Jared, I mean, uh, before, before I get to you, though, Grant, I want to ask you. So you're convinced the Canadians with Florida's pick take a goalie? No, I'm not. You, no, 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 Tony. I'm just saying yeah. that it, it, it'll be under consideration. I got it. I got it. And you if know? it comes between a goalie and Quentin Musty, where are they going? Oh, well. Yeah, you don't know I, the whole Quentin Musty thing, do you? No, I, you know, yeah. I, I mean. So, so it's an inside joke because your buddy Snake Boisvert is very, very high on Quentin oh. Musty. <laughs> oh, okay. Here's a DJ Demers going to see Musty play tomorrow. Cheers from Sudbury. A winger who's about six foot two something left winger. Yeah, Snake Boisvert is very high on him. Well, Snake Boisvert was really, really high on Dominic Bach and had him top eight in the draft year and doc why don't you look up his uh, nhl stats here tony i never even saw him play a game <laughs> so that's a little shot simon will get a simon will get a kick out of that oh my god i have a feeling he's going to be on tomorrow to give you a shot back <laughs> my god what are we doing here we're, take, we're taking shots on the sick podcast <laughs> i love simon. just to go to what to what grant said I, I think the Canadians definitely draft a goalie. Um, you saw at the World Juniors, there's a couple of undrafted guys, uh, a trio of them who uh, might go second, third rounds as well. So uh, I think the Canadians will definitely pick a goalie in this draft. I think that there's a gap in the organization, like like Grant said. Um, I don't know if they necessarily go first round. I think that Florida pick's going to be a little too high um, to grab a goalie. But if they make the playoffs, um, then I think that, yeah, it's definitely in the conversation, especially if, someone in that in that range you know steps up in the, the second half of this year but yeah i i would be very surprised the canadians did not draft a goalie this year and th there's there's a good group of maybe underrated goalies that are a little bit older uh that, yeah. that really stepped up this year the artisan was great last night in the top prospects game yeah like, yeah uh, he was yeah and he he is a legitimate first round so look, some scouts think he's better in cosa and cosa went 15th overall uh more than a, a couple of scouts have said to me that Hrabel, you know, he could be top fit. Like, you know, the good goalies, the legitimate goalies in the last few years usually yeah. typically go top 15. You look at Spencer Knight, Askarov, you know, if there's a guy that this kid's six six and he's good. And if, uh, you know, we haven't seen it on public lists, but certainly I've got him around 20 and it doesn't really matter where, you know, if mm -hmm. you got him ranked 22 or whatever, if that's, if you believe in that guy and uh, that's your need and you got to fill it and it's at 17 or what have you, wouldn't be surprised if the Habs uh, grab them. I also do think though that they're, they may end up with a third first round pick, you know, 
the, the, the like they're going to be sellers at the draft here or at the uh, trade deadline here, and uh, I wouldn't be surprised if they they end up with a with three first round picks, and then and then I, I can't see them not using one of them on uh, one of those goalies. There's reports of them refusing a first round pick for Josh Anderson. Uh, guys, I'd be surprised if they trade Anderson. I mean, not this year anyway. Agree? Yeah, I, I, but I mean, first round and the prospect or something, it, that'd be pretty hard to pass up, you know, for somebody. I, with, I, I agree. With, I who's going to score 30 points. You know, he's on pace for 30 points this year. First round pick for somebody that, you know, is on pace for 30 points. It, you'd have to consider that pretty strong you know, you know you're right and you're right and, and he also he also does make five and a half million dollars and yeah you, know, you want to take some money off the cap as well and maybe but. you can go out and you can put it towards a free agent or other players jared all this talk of pierre luc dubois and today <laughs> i heard my buddy george larac and max truman on bpm sports 91.9 fm out of montreal quebec's <laughs> number one sports radio station <clears throat> um <laughs> Thanks, Grant. Um, <laughs> has been since uh, the end of May. Uh, they were talking about, and they were just throwing it out there, right? Would you trade Nick Suzuki for uh, Pierre Luc Dubois? And they both said no. They both said no. But George Lorac said oh, he would trade. Not. George Lorac said he would trade. Well, but Dubois is having a better year, right? But he is older. George Lorac said he would trade Kirby Doc. And maybe something else, or maybe just Kirby Doc straight up. So I'm going to get to that in a second. But before I do, well, I think we lost Grant here. Okay, so we're going to try and get him back. All right. But before I do, Jared, did you know that uh, Kirby Doc? Did you know that he could fight that way? No, <laughs> that, that was a little bit surprising. But I mean, it's. I mean, that's that's what. How how many years have the Canadians been looking for a big center who who can stand up for himself and and play the way Doc does. I mean, um, yeah, I mean, honestly, would I trade uh, for, for Pierre-Luc Dubois? Would I trade Doc? I, I don't know. I mean, if you believe the rumors, if he really wants to come here, if he's really going to hit free agency, I would, I would personally let it play out, whether he signs in Montreal or not. I, I don't think, you know, one way or the other, but, but I, I think honestly, I, I'm I'm riding Suzuki and Doc down the middle right now. I, I don't know yeah. if, so if I would I, touch you know that what, right and, now. Jerry, you know what's really nice to see with Doc is that you know that it's it's working out here. You understand what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. if it wasn't quite yeah. working out or if you had some doubts, but you know that as a winger on the first line, he's working out. As a second line center, he's working out. All those things you wanted to see him add to his game. The only thing that hasn't panned out is him in the face-off circle so far. But you know what? As he keeps on putting up points like this, he keeps on playing like this. Who cares? Who cares? Absolutely. Absolutely. And Look, you know, like, there were question is, marks. You know that this is a question that's coming up because it's the province of Quebec, right? It's another <laughs> kid from here. But there are some who are saying, oh, you see, Jonathan Drouin wanted to come back to play in La Belle for It didn't work out for him. And I don't think they're crazy about Pierre-Luc Dubois because of that, right? The pressure, um, some respond to it, some don't. And some are probably worried that Pierre-Luc Dubois won't respond to the pressure in Montreal. I think that's a good point. And I'm, I, I'm a big proponent on that because I think you don't need to just get Quebec-born players and put them in Montreal. And, you know, this goes back to, you know, how many first rounds have we heard, oh, Montreal's going to pick a, a, a Quebec-born player. You need the right player. You know, I, I go back to, to what Branch Rickey said when he signed Jackie Robinson. He's like, I don't just want, you know, an African-American player. I want the right one because you need the right attitude. And I think that you look at the players who have succeeded in Montreal. Philip Deneau is one. He had the right attitude in, in Montreal. He, he was, obviously, the expectations weren't as high as Duran. They weren't as high as Dubois. It was a little bit different. But he, he thrived here because of that. You know, you look at guys like that, and I think that you need the right kind of player. And I'm, I'm not saying Pierre-Luc Dubois isn't, but but you just can't put, you know, say, hey, get this Quebec player, put him in the lineup, um, put him in, 
you know, high expectations and expect them to, to succeed because it doesn't work that way. It's a different kind of pressure. And and you see it with Drouet. When people when 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 he came in, the expectations were sky high. You know, they could they couldn't be higher. A lot of that was put on by you know management, by Marc Bergevin. Um, a lot of that, you know, they put him at center in that first year, which was weird, but we're not gonna get into that right now. Yeah. But 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 you also see the flip side with Drouet, and as soon as there's struggles, it's really bad. And and you you mentioned the no goals with Drouet. I thought before he got injured, he was playing really good hockey. Well, his and, game and where he, he had three assists, that was his best game in, in a yeah, long time. Three assists. There, there was the you know the almost goal when Anderson hit it up the line too. Um, I mean, that might have even, even been the same game or, or a game after. He, he was playing really good hockey. And, and I think that the issue with, with Drouin is that he hasn't got going just injuries. And I, I thought he was playing very well in, in a role that, you know, he was up and down in the lineup. I thought he was, you know, he was playing center again. <laughs> yeah. It was like, like how it started. And, and I think that he was playing okay hockey. And, and I think we have to adjust our expectations. You know, Jonathan Drouin is what he is. He's a middle six player um, at best uh, right now. He's going to give you some, some scoring. He's going to, you know, be a good passer. He, he's not going to be that top line guy. He's not going to be that guy who's going to play with Caulfield and Suzuki. And for so many years, he was billed as that. And I think that we have to adjust that expectation. Okay, Grant is back, but you just said something, uh, Jared, where you said Jonathan Droy is a middle six player and he's going to give you some scoring. Um, you know, offense. he's got, no, he's got... Goal scoring. offense, not goal scoring. Let, let me let me readjust that. Okay, offense. Okay, well, he's got uh, he's got uh, 55 points in the last 106 games, so it's uh, it's a uh, almost a point. Just over a point um, every other game, yeah, so it's an points. average. It's an so, average of forty points. That's good for that's for Montreal's middle lines. That's you know that's top of the that's top top of the line, Tony. Yeah, but Look at Montreal's yeah. second and third lines over the last five years, and tell me if any you know yeah. any of them got more than forty points. Not I, I, no, no, I, and I understand that, but given <laughs> given drawings, what I think we're talking about is, and, and Jared was saying that before he went down the injury, the injury was playing good hockey, and he was. Yeah, but given everything that transpired here in the six years, and given that this year he played twenty eight games, he's hurt. Last year he played thirty four, hurt. The year before he played forty four, hurt. The year before he played twenty seven, hurt. Um, I so mean, I think, I think I think it's safe to say that <laughs> it's too little. It's too little, too late. He's not yeah. going to be back. Oh. I mean, let's be honest. Look, look, let, let, let me go back and 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 you know, just what you know. Has he been a disappointment? Absolutely. But if he's still disappointing you, that's on you. That's not on Jonathan Joy anymore. He is what he is. Um, but but yeah, no, absolutely, it's a disappointment. Um, he he was. It was not a good trade. Um, it was he was not put in a good position from the start. Um, he's been a disappointment. But he is what he is now. You know, he he's not that top player. And if he's still disappointing you at this point, six years in, that that's not that's not on. Uh, anybody else but but your expectations being wrong really uh, i'm not saying you tony obviously uh, i'm just yeah. saying in general um but i mean yeah I mean, look he's been a disappointment from when he was here but i think that what he is now people haven't adjusted that they still think that he's going to be that top guy and he's not it's clear now and and it's it's unfortunate but between the injuries and being put in montreal and um you know there, there's a lot of different factors there uh, but uh, I think that, you know, I, I think he's, he's still an NHL player. I know he's not restricted free agent at the end of the year, but I think he'll, he'll end up somewhere. Um, and, uh, but yeah, I mean, no, no doubt that he's a disappointment uh, Grant, from, from when he was acquired. Yeah. About a month ago, give or take about a month ago. Right. I think we were talking about Alexi Lafreniere and, uh, you know, we we're talking about, you know, with the Rangers trade Lafreniere for Slavkovsky, with the Canadians trade Slavkovsky for Lafreniere. And at one point, I asked you what you'd give up for Lafreniere. And you said you give up Kirby Doc. And there's a lot of reaction to it because Kirby has played really good hockey in the last month. Um, does a month change your opinion at all? Now we know that Kirby can not only play the wing on the first line, we also know that he can definitely do the job at center. Um, we also know that he could take care of himself when he dropped mm -hmm. the, when he drops the gloves. He looked pretty good tonight, but 
Would you still make that trade if it was on the table? You really like these speculative trades, eh, Tony? It's, like, the, well, I mean, it's, it's, never, it, hap it's never happening, you know, first yeah. of all. And I mean, I said it at the time, too, you know, like they aren't trading Lafreniere. And yeah, I'd still not trade Lafreniere for Doc. Lafreniere has yeah. been really good the last month, too, Tony. Yeah, so has Cackle. Cackle's yeah. picked it up, too. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, no, I, you know, um, no, I still, I still think Lafreniere is going to have a better career, but. I think let I I think I don't think get as strongly about it as I did a month ago. I mean, Kirby Doc was struggling a month ago, right? Yeah. Now yeah. he's uh, he's playing very well. So yeah, I'm I'm I feel more confident that Doc can be a top two center now for sure. Uh, especially when I'm starting to win a few, you know. Uh, you're not going to stay a top two center. You're not going to play uh, top two center minutes if you. If you win less than 40 percent of your face-offs it's just not happening and he wasn't uh, for his career this season last season every season uh last few games i don't know what his stats were today i don't know if you either 30, of you saw 38 percent in the circle yeah, 22 well, minutes and one second he had one assist uh, okay and he had one shot on goal and he had three blocked shots well, he had uh he had he was 60 percent uh in his lot previous three games which was encouraging so uh, i slipped back down to 38 but i mean if he can keep it you know 45 plus then i uh, then i feel more comfortable about that but you know if he never does get good enough that uh you can trust him all the time in the face off circuit you just you play him with another centerman right i mean uh a lot of NHL players that play on the wing are converted centers, and that's what I think in the in the future Montreal is going to have that, you know, as well. That they'll be, uh, you know, uh, Becker, Kapanen, or what have you. Both those guys can play top three center roles in the NHL. But if you got Doc Suzuki, you know, one of those guys loses, right? <laughs> so maybe he ends up on the wing with uh, with Doc. Down the, down the road and uh, takes key faceoffs where Doc, is, you know, has a weakness and stuff. Yeah. But I feel more comfortable about Doc being a, a top two center now, for sure. Uh, I still think Lafreniere. I mean, he's you know he's just starting his career, Tony, and yeah. give, give him a couple more years, and he's just going to keep getting better, and he'll be. I think he'll be a first line winger for a lot of years in the NHL. Jared. What do you think of uh, Rem Pitlick breaking away with Kirby Doc right behind them? He keeps on looking back, keeps on looking back. I think he's wondering, uh, is another player uh, coming from the uh, from the Detroit Red Wings? Where is Kirby exactly? Kirby was holding him up, you can tell. So at one point he was like, okay, but I know we're on a 2 on over here, but you're getting chased down, so I'm going to try and get in the other guy's way, and you're off to the races. Let's go. Uh, Rem Pitlick misses. The puck comes the other way. And uh, more cider to Rasmussen, Rasmussen to Fabry, and the game winner. What a what a dramatic ending to the game, eh? Yeah, it, it was wild. And even even the last you know few seconds of regulation, <laughs> there was a couple of back and forth chances as well. But I, I, you know, Pitlick I think was was trying to get the two on zero. He knew Doc was there. But when the Red Wing was was coming back really strong, I think it might have been cider at that point. Um, it became clear it was a breakaway, and he just kind of went off and, and did it himself. Um, couldn't get the goal. Like, you know, it would have been, what, two goals in, in three games where he scored the yeah. overtime winner because he got it in Toronto as well against Toronto. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, kind of unfortunate. And, you know, when you have in, in overtime three on three, if you miss a chance, an odd man rush, it's coming back the other way. <laughs> and, yeah. and you better hope that, that your goalie is, is there as well. So, that, that's that's what three on three does. It's it's you know continuous two on ones <laughs> going one way or the other. Hey yeah. uh, Grant, do you remember where you had more cider on your mock draft? Uh, mock draft where you had him in, uh, in um, my uh, yeah, I had him eighth overall. You had him. I was eight. Uh, I was one of the few that had him top ten. I think most uh, public scouting uh, lists had him like fifteen, twenty, you know, somewhere in there, but. Uh, yeah, I had him. I had him top ten. I really liked him, and I, I, you know, you you, you had to project right because he's playing in yeah. the DEL, and uh, you didn't get to see him a lot other than just on video and stuff. But you could see the potential of that kid for sure. Grant, I don't know if you heard the same. You probably did. I heard the Canadians loved them that year. Oh yeah, yeah, I'm sure. 
Trevor loved, you know, Trevor loved them, you know. I, one of the reasons I probably had him top 10 because I, I knew Trevor liked them, you know. Um, yeah, I, I, all, all the scouts that I deal with thought he was a top 10 guy. It was just the public uh, list that, you know, and it, it happens often enough where they don't, they don't know what the NHL teams think of a guy. And that was one example where he was being underrated by uh, what you saw in public lists. Uh, Jared, um, Michael Pizzetta. <laughs> at the beginning of the year, a lot of people looked at him and said, all right, he could be a 12, he could be a 13, he could be a 14. He's not an everyday NHLer. You could put him in maybe every, you know, he could play one in every three. Is he an everyday NHLer as an energy guy, like being your 12th forward on a team? Or do you I don't think see so. him as a guy who could be out of the lineup every now and then. I I don't think I don't think he's a top twelve forward on a, on a on a playoff team. I I just don't. That's nothing against Pozzetta. I, I think that you know him becoming an NHLer is is amazing on its own. I mean, you, you look at his time in Laval, and you know he was a healthy scratch under Joel Bouchard for a lot of games, um, and he just worked and kept working and kept working. Um, but no, I, I don't think that he's he's a top twelve forward on a on a playoff team. Uh, I, I think that on merit on this Canadians team, if you look at the veterans, and there's some veterans who, you know, all things being equal, shouldn't maybe not be in the lineup. Maybe he's a top twelve on this team, but uh, on a on a contending team, I don't think he'd be in your top twelve at least not now. That's not to say he's bad. I just think that there's there's better players um, out there. I mean, obviously you can win with a guy like Pizzetta there if you're top nine is a little bit better but on a on a situation where montreal is right now um i think if you look at their lineup right now with the emergence of guys like linen and harvey pinard uh if they were healthy right now i don't think he'd be in the top 12 forwards right now um on this montreal team guys if the fourth line played well tonight we're talking about Pizzetta, and we're talking about bell and we're talking about harvey pinard um, you know, the line totaled seven points in tonight's hockey game with uh, Harvey Pinard getting a couple of goals. Uh, if we talk, if we take a look at some players who struggled tonight, I thought Chris Weidman was laboring. Like, I, I thought he was in real big trouble. Uh, he didn't look good on that first goal. On the second goal that the, the Red Wings score, uh, he was pressed. He, you know, he put the puck over the glass. He was called for a penalty. Then they score the second goal. But all night long, I thought Weidman like just kind of looked out of place compared to every other defenseman the Canadians have. Grant? Is that for, is that for me? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, he's the seventh, the eighth, or ninth guy. So I don't think they're going to lose too much sleep over that. You know, uh, I think what you might see is, well, as soon as they get a healthy forward, they'll be, uh, you aren't going to see Weidman. They won't be dressing seven defenseman that's for sure it's out of just out of necessity because of yeah. the injuries more than anything right now yeah it's it's worked out pretty well though the 11 7 so far and, sure. I, and i get it. it is an emergency thing but yeah the only the only thing i don't quite understand is they are they are really taxing nick suzuki i mean it's a lost season why is he playing as much as he's playing and I, let, let me bring it up here if i can Nick Suzuki in tonight's game, 24 minutes and 36 seconds. Hmm. He had the second most ice time behind Michael Matheson, who played 26-39. Suzuki had the second most ice time for the Canadians. He had, I believe, the, let me see here. He had the third most ice time in the game was Michael Matheson was leading at 26 minutes Cider. and um, 39 seconds, Moritz Sider was number two yeah. at 25-45. And Nick Suzuki played 24-36, way more than any forward that played in this game. And I got to ask you guys, well, why? Dvorak, Dvorak got hurt, don't forget, Tony. Yes, you're, you're right. Dvorak left yeah. at one point. And, uh, I mean, they only had, you know, like this Belzil – uh a suzuki and doc you know uh really like they're missing a lot of centers <laughs> you know monahan's out uh, dvorak was out e evans out like you know 
Uh, so it was just, uh, I think it was, you know, because it's easier to double shift the centers. Yeah, that's right. And I mean, plus, you know, you only had three centers really, you know, so, you know, I, I don't know how much Belzil played, but I bet you that was the most, uh, he's ever played as an NHLer. his ice time tonight. Yeah. Belzil played 1235. Yeah. Well, I bet you that he's never played that before, you know, yeah. which, which is kind of cool. Two assists in the hockey game, and yeah. uh, and Looked it would have been nice. Would have been nice to see him get. It would have been nice to see RV Bernard get a hat trick, but it also oh, would have been yeah. nice to see him get a goal. Would have been nice to see Joe Valeno get a goal too, guys. Uh, he got, <laughs> he got robbed by Jake Allen. Like the yeah. poor kid just looked in the air and he's like, "Oh my god!" Like he thought he had a goal in front of family and friends, and it just it wasn't yeah. meant to be. Eh? Do you remember remember when you had me on early in the year when he was ranked top ten in the draft and he said well, the Habs have to take this guy I remember that 10. I remember that yeah and I said wait Tony you know uh, long season it's November I know he's an Italian from uh, you know Montreal <laughs> but we gotta you know pump the brakes a bit here and we'll see so and, uh, so you know. a you were right <laughs> b uh, I don't think Yasperi Kakanyemi who was taken third is that much better than Joe Valeno who's number 30 Oh yeah. Well, we'll see. Well, I mean, the point. Joe Valeno's not playing a top three uh, center role in uh, on a contender like uh, Jess Berry is, but uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, and 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 yes, Barry playing on a top three role on a contender has sixteen points. Yeah, I know. Yeah, it's not. So, a, it's not all about the points. Just like you were saying, Luke Dubois is better than than Suzuki this year. Why is that, Tony? Because he has more points. Like I well, don't agree. I, I, that, I was I was saying it from a production standpoint. Well, yes, yes. okay, it's not all about production. You know that. Uh, true. It's not all. About, <laughs> no, it's not all about production. You're right. Oh, no, you know, Jess Berry's playing a very good, uh, very good two way game. He's not, be, you know, and yeah, he's still not getting the points. But he's, I, I watched a few Carolina games this year, and he, uh, you know, he, he's a good NHLer. And and Joe Joe's not bad either. You're right. No, but as, as it's it turned out, I, he. I, Grant, I agree with you. He's a good NHLer. Yeah. You know, when you draft at number three overall, he's supposed to be a lot better yeah, than well, the NHLer. You know, uh, well, Barrett Hayton was drafted fifth overall, and, uh, he, you know, Joe, uh, Philip Zadina was drafted sixth overall. I mean, you know, it wasn't a banner draft. It would just no, happen but to be Brady, one of those years. But Brady Kachuk was drafted fourth. I see. Right, that. and we heard that, and we heard that for five years on your on, with. Uh, well, I I, with, I know, but uh, I, yeah, yeah, we we we've heard we heard that uh, with you and Norman Flynn for five years on uh, TSN on TSN. Yeah, well, we well Grant, Grant, if I can, <laughs> now that you're you're saying this, I mean, we've heard you say how great Yasperi Kakanyemi is for that time. Well, no, I never did say he was great. I just said well, give him time, and you still got to give him time. He's twenty-two years old. That's yeah, true enough. We'll give him time, but you know, you do bring up a lot of stats uh, for Kock and Yemi when I when used to when they're complimentary in the supporters' case, but when they don't, yes, you tend to not look at them. I mean, so you're you're right. Yeah, Zadina hasn't panned out the expectation. No, Barrett Hayden hasn't panned out the expectation no, either. That's right. But Brady Kachuk, it, it happens. Uh, it, you, it happens, Tony. It ha it happens all the time. It happened with uh, Benoit Puglia. It happened yeah. with Yessi Pugliarvi. Hey, it oh. even happened with Neil Yakupov, who was drafted first oh. overall. <laughs> Patrick Steffen, Alexander Dake. List goes on and on. Yeah. Michael, let me, let me let me ask let me ask you this. Just hold on. Uh, wait, 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 guys... wait, just Grant, please don't block me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's all good, Tony. Uh, I I. I I have a question for either one of you, or both of you. If Brady Kachuk was drafted by Montreal, would he be the Brady Kachuk he is today? Maybe not. I I, I think, and they wouldn't, I and think they that's wouldn't, a bigger question. And they but, wouldn't have uh, been drafting Yuri Slavkovsky last year either. You know, I mean, there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of uh, yeah. permutations that you of don't, course. you know. Of course. They probably, they, might, they may not have, uh, you know, they'd have made the playoffs and not picked uh, Gooley and Caulfield as well. So, you're right, I mean, you're right. So, you know, things happen for a reason. Yeah. And, uh, you know, got to get over the cock and yammy pick. I, you know, it, <laughs> I, I was wrong, uh, you know, and uh, I admit it that Brady Kachuk's a better hockey player. But, you know, 
every team has those uh no no you're right, those right. misses i mean i could you know tampa bay even like uh you know uh when there was they <laughs> talked about how great steve eisman was well they picked brett Connolly top six uh slater cuckoo top 10. um i mean i can name uh you know they had three or four guys that cal foot 13th overall you know montreal hasn't had three guys picked in the top 15 that 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 uh, didn't pan out at all they had one guy but we always talk about him you know <laughs> like sergachev was a great pick uh Gouli was a great pick sergachev was, was a great, great pick. pick mcavoy would have been a better pick <laughs> no well sure tony you know every draft there's a guy like you I know? agree with you. I agree with you. I agree with you. Hey, listen, I think the, 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 I, 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 I think Sergeyev would go top five if you did a redraft or top uh, six. Yeah, so, I think Sergeyev was a great pick. I I agree with yeah. you. I, I just I just and McAvoy that. would be top three. You're right. Ma McAvoy ended up being the best defenseman that draft. Yeah. Oli Yolevi, Vancouver picked Oli Yolevi at fifth overall. Yeah, I mean, that's clear, right. It clearly hasn't worked out at all. Like no, I and you can and you say oh Bo or Boston uh, scouts must be geniuses. Well. Two years before that, they picked, uh, you know, 13, 14, 15. They picked Zboril. Sinitian. Uh, Sinitian. The, the, the Brusque. And the Brusque. Yeah. When yeah. they could have had Barzal, Shabbat. Connor. And Connor. Kyle Connor. Every that team, it's just, you know, like there's not one super scout in the in the entire league. It, it, yeah. I do uh, intend on writing a book about scouting at some point, And I, I already started a chapter and it said there's no super scouts. You know, the Dave last Conte game. at one point was thought, you know, oh, he picked Elias, he picked this guy, you know, he's a super scout. Well, then he had 10 years in a row where every single first round pick they picked was a bust. You know, Barry Fraser in Edmonton, when he picked Coffee and Messier and Anderson and all those guys, oh, best scout there ever was. He's, they had uh, 10 straight busts in a year with their first pick with Barry Fraser. You know, it, it's just, Picking seventeen-year-olds and and uh, you're you know it's such a crapshoot and every team is going to have uh, guys that boom and and guys that bust and that's part of the fun of it is that you know there's it's there's so much up in the air you know and that's why I love the draft the uncertainty of the whole thing. The last thing I would want to be would be an amateur scout. <laughs> I mean I, I think I think it's the hardest job in hockey, man. Oh. I think it's so hard. Yeah. Um, you know, and you I think I think you you put it well when you talked about the Bruins missing out on 13, 14, 15. They could have had three studs, right? Yeah. Uh, and and but you know, the Bruins they picked Kessel at five and they picked the uh, Lucic at 50, and they picked uh, uh, uh Pasternak yeah. at 25, and they picked um they picked Marchand at 71. Like in, in turn, they had and and Bergeron yeah. at 45. They they also had some great picks. So you, you win sure. you win some, you win some. You win yeah. some, you lose some. I mean, we talked about Trevor. Uh, you know, uh, Kokanemi at three was obviously not a good pick. Sergachev at nine was a very good pick. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, you win some, you lose some. <laughs> Gooley, you know, Gooley, Caulfield. Like, he ended it off pretty good there with, you know, his, uh, yeah. for a guy that had a reputation for not being able to draft in the first round, Gooley and Caulfield and, uh, well, Logan Mayu. <laughs> you know, uh, you're right. They're three great picks. Yeah. They're, they're, yeah. they're three great picks where they were. I mean, Gouley yeah. at 16, Caulfield at 15, and Mayu, I think, at what, 31 or 31, I think, or 32? Yeah. But yeah. Um, they're great picks, 100%. Sure. Okay. Uh, on that note, uh, that's it was it was a good game tonight, eh? It was fun to watch, eh? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, they – Yeah, uh, and then, like you said, off the top, that's what you want. <laughs> You don't want you don't want these you know six two losses uh, you know whatever whatever those games were against you know Florida um, that you don't want that uh, that's 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 we had a lot of that last season watching games where it was over in the first ten minutes um, and and this team is is better than they probably should be in the standings honestly uh, yeah. but they are where they are and and now the losses help them more than more than wins do. I think uh, I think Al Murray's pretty good, um, Grant. No, yeah, pretty good scout. I but mean, he I, picked Cal Foot thirteenth overall. Yeah, like uh, you know, 
You know, I, I know tackle, he, uh, Mitchell Stevens was uh, what thirty three or something. He can't even score in Laval now. You know. Yeah. Uh, I mean, if you go back through their, they haven't had that many uh, first round picks, uh, high picks that you know, that have been great in the last six, seven years. Not, know? not, not first round picks. No, not first you round know. picks. You're right. But, uh, you know, but yeah, he's, he's a solid scout. Kucherov, Kucherov was a great pick. Palat was a great pick. Kalorn was a very good pick. Point. Uh, Braden Point was obviously an awesome pick. Uh, mm-hmm. Anthony Sorelli, I thought was a really good pick. Vasilevsky. Vasilevsky was a great pick. Yeah. Yeah. If, if you were to, you know, ask me who has been one of, you know, if you were to rank scouts or whatever, Al would be in the in my top five at this point. Really? Oh, so listen, give me your top five right now, today, <laughs> January twenty sixth. Who's your top five scouts? Oh, I I'd have to think about that, Tony. Yeah, Hawk and Anderson. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, and and then again, most of his picks, most of his picks, when we're talking about the Swedes. Were players we're, that were drafted fifth, sixth, yeah. seventh round, and if he wasn't sure ago. about those players, why wouldn't he have picked them in the first or second round? Well, no, that's that. There's that point too. You know, how much yeah. of a genius are you to 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 uh, pass on somebody six times and then luck out with them? You know, <laughs> yeah. Hey guys, have a great night. I really enjoyed this roundtable. Grant McCag of, uh, you know, former scout with the Montreal Canadiens wearing the Montreal Canadiens hoodie there. So look at it. He's still a supporter. And, uh, is, you know, support him and his publication. It's an independent scouting service. He's got a lot of one-on-one interviews. He's got a lot of insight. Recruits.ca. The subscription is like it's a joke of a, of a, of a very, very inexpensive price. What is it again, Grant? Oh, it's like $10 for a HAB subscription and... 30 uh, to get the draft guide and Habs coverage for a year. So uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's harder to find a better bang for your buck. Jared book of eyes on the prize. Uh, I read something on Twitter before we let you go about <laughs> eyes on the prize. Are, are they, what's going on with the website? Yeah. Well, yeah. So we're, uh, we're getting defunded by our parent company uh, as of uh, end of February. So, but uh, we're, we're not planning on going anywhere. Uh, we're planning on, we're, we're in looking at transition things right now, but uh, we expect that March 1st, uh, we'll have the same things. It might not be the same website, uh, but, but we'll, uh, we're, we're planning on keep on going. But yeah, it's, it's going to change a little bit, but uh, a little bit of a panic <laughs> when we heard, found out on last Friday. Wow, but yeah. um, we're, we're, uh, we're, you know, looking at a transition. We have, uh, if anybody wants to support us, we have a Patreon set up. We can go to the website and, and check that out uh, because we don't know what's going to happen starting March 1st, but we're, we're, we're planning on having the same coverage we always did. Um, and we'll let, we'll let everyone know um, once we know. Thank you, Jared. Appreciate your time, man. Uh, see you, Grant. Thanks, Talk man. to you guys soon. Nice meeting you, Jared. Oh, nice meeting you first guys. time you guys met okay. or what? Really? Yeah. 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 yeah first time. <laughs> All right, so maybe yeah. you guys can text each other after, exchange information, <laughs> stuff like that. Absolutely. Grant, you could tell Jared, oh, man, I hate being on with that Tony, man. He just gets to me. He gets to me. He gets to me. <laughs> no, that'd be a total lie. Tony, I love it. Every yeah. Time. I uh, I have fun talking to you too, bud. Have a good night, okay. guys. We'll talk to you soon. You have too. All Thanks. right, there you have it. Uh, Grant McCag of Recruits.ca and uh, Jared Book of Habs Eyes on the Prize. All right, okay. Uh, why don't we do this? We're going to open up the phone lines at one 585 sick one 585 7425 And we're also going to get to some messages. Sammy Cavallaro at Master Control. Open up the phone lines right now. Let's see who wants to talk to Marinaro. I'll take a call or two tonight. Why not? one 585 7425 It's now time for You Called. You Called. You Called. Presented by Playground. You Called is uh, brought to you by Playground, your premier gaming destination located just over the Mercier Bridge, only minutes from downtown Montreal. It is Playground. 1-888-585-7425. It's a toll-free number, absolutely free. Pick up your mobile or pick up your home phone and give me a call. Way in. I'm going to get to you right now. I know Sammy and Yellow. And Juliana, they're all standing by and by the phone. So if you call, they'll pick up that phone and they'll patch you into me. 
and we're going to have a nice chat. You want to bring up some questions in the meantime? Let's go for it. Hey, Tony, Tony here. Big fan, quick question. Before I go to bed and hear the podcast at 5 a.m. on my way to work, with the DAC fight tonight, could we say it's the start of the big, bad Habs era? Well, Kirby Doc can obviously defend himself. We know that Arbor Jackye likes to throw them. Michael Pizzetta can defend himself. Joel Edmondson can defend himself. Josh Anderson can defend himself. But I still don't think they're the uh, the bad, bad Habs yet, you know? Speaking of uh, you going to bed, speaking of bed, this is the first time I'm wearing these for the podcast. Uh, I'm even shy to do this, but I'm going to do it anyway. It's going gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna to pop up somewhere tomorrow, but look at these, huh? What do you think? Huh? Look at that. <laughs> My God. They're so comfy. It's unbelievable. Where are we going? Hello. Hello. Mohammed. How are you, Tony? Good. How are you, Mohammed? I'm good. I'm amazing. What's uh, going on, my man? Uh, not much. I just have a question for you, Tony. Sure. So when you know when uh, people say tanking is uh, bad culture, all this Austin Matthews, Connor McDavid. I have a question. Would you be willing to put twenty dollars on a bet if Ken Hughes was the GM of Toronto or Edmonton and drafted first of all, they would have a cup by now? If Kent Hughes was the GM of Toronto or Edmonton. Yeah, and they got either McDavid or Matthews. Would they have a cup by now? Would they have a cup by now? Yeah. Well, uh, so you're saying basically would he have done better than the GMs that they've had there in Edmonton and Toronto, right? Well, yeah. it's a small sample size for Kent Hughes as a GM, right? He's been on the job for one year. So, I mean, I, I think he's a very good general manager. Would they have a cup by now? I don't know. I don't know. They've been two very exciting organizations to watch, though, no? Yeah. Absolutely. But I should add uh, Jeff Gordon as well. People are saying, oh, don't tank. It's bad for the culture. But, you know, you have a chance at Conor Bedard. You might as well, no? Yes, it's just that players are not going to tank. But look at Chicago. Chicago's tanking. You know how they're tanking? The players are still trying very hard. But the team's not very good. They That's gave true. away Doc for nothing, and they gave away DeBrincat for nothing. And now they're going to end up trading Kane and or Taves. So without tanking, they're tanking. There's different ways you can tank. A coach does not want to lose games. Players do not want to lose games. But if a general manager empties the cupboard, the team's not going to win a lot of games. Yep. I would think... Um, it's an interesting question you asked, but I think only time will tell because I think maybe Edmonton might win a cup anyway. And I think Toronto might win a cup anyway, or maybe neither of them do. Maybe one of them does. Uh, maybe Ken well, Hughes goes on to do terrific things with the Canadians. Mm -hmm. Well, I would, bet, I would bet McDavid's going to win a cup. I hope so. I want to see the best players win cups. Could you imagine if Connor McDavid having the career that he's having doesn't win a Stanley Cup? And that's why I'm happy that Nathan McKinnon won his cup last year. I'm happy that Ovechkin won his cup. I'm happy that Patrick Kane won his cup. I'm happy Jonathan Taze won his cup. I'm happy Patrice Bergeron won his cup. I'm happy Sidney Crosby won his cup. I'm happy uh, Malkin won his cup. Great players, they deserve to win the Stanley Cup. And I hope McDavid wins the cup one year. I really do. Thanks so much for the phone call. Sounds like a good guy to me. Muhammad. All right. Uh, it's eleven oh four, and I and I think that that's the way we can end it. This way, I keep you. We keep you wanting more, right? We keep you wanting more. Once again, uh, hit the like button, share the video with your friends, tell your friends about it, subscribe to our YouTube channel, leave us a five star review on Google, Apple, or Spotify. We really appreciate it. Uh, if you're watching once again on YouTube or Facebook, you comment sick and hit the like button. I am Marinero. I'm Tony Marinero. I'm Marinero. Tell your friends about it. Say the podcast is absolutely sick. Monday to Friday.
at 10 p.m. on YouTube Live, Twitter Live, and Facebook Live. He's Marinaro. I'm Marinaro. A demain. Ciao. Buonanotte. Bye-bye. And that's a wrap. Hope you don't miss us too much until next time. Follow The Sick Podcast with Tony Marinero on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Google Play, and Apple Podcasts. The Sick Podcast is brought to you by Energy Transportation Group. Driven to be different. 8.6. Intense by nature. And La Cage. If the last time you went to La Cage was when the Habs won the cup, it's time you went back to La Cage. The menu will surprise you.